thanks for joining us. I'm Jennifer Glass and I'm here with the Yoga Lifestyles team today in beautiful Delray Beach. And we're gonna do a variety of flows for you today and how to's and today uh, we're first gonna focus on the crow. So all about the crow. We're gonna warm our bodies up a little bit. So if you have some more time at home to warm yourself up even more, really work the various muscles we need before getting into it, uh, that would be wonderful. We're going to do a little bit and then jump right into it. So this is for all levels. So I'll offer options, whether you've never done yoga before in your life or if you do it every day. Um, and we're going to also look at some different variations. So let's go ahead and get started and we're gonna start in cat-cow. So your wrists are directly under your shoulders and your knees are hip distance width apart. And really press your palms into the mat. Press down all 10 knuckles and squeeze your thumbs together, squeeze your biceps together. And gaze down and imagine that there's a string on the top of your head pulling the crown of your head forward and equally pulling your tailbone back. So elongating the muscles along your spine. And then exhale, drop your belly and gaze up. So imagine like you could hold a whole pack of pencils under your armpits. So if you need to wiggle yourself forward or back to get that feeling, go ahead and do that. And then exhale, arch and curl, chin to chest. Press the earth away, really round into your back. Then exhale, drop your belly, gaze up. And think about pulling your chest through your arms. So you're almost pulling your hands back. Then exhale, round and curl, chin to chest. And take a few more cat cows at your own pace. So listen to your body and your movements and flow with your breath. So what makes yoga yoga is the breath. So if otherwise we're just moving. So as you inhale, move, and as you exhale, move. And you can even take cat cow to the side. I don't know if this is even a yoga pose. I just kind of say around the world. So send your ribs to the right, lean back into your psoas, piriformis, really curl and round, hips to the left, lean into your left ribs, and then back the opposite way. So whatever we do on one side, we always wanna do on the other side to start to build that muscle balance. And then come to stillness in your tabletop, and then exhale, downward facing dog. So make an upside down V with your body. Tuck your toes, hips go up and back. Press your palms into your mat, feet hip distance width apart. Squeeze your thumbs together, squeeze your biceps, and relax your head. I like to think of it like a turtle with its head popping out of its shell. Just relax it, you know. Typically your ears are in alignment with your biceps, but just move to a place that feels best for you. And then come up on your tippy toes, bend your knees so your hips are going up to the sky. Now keep your hips there. Drop your heels down. And downward facing dog, uh, oftentimes people think it's all about getting your heels to the earth. Really the purpose is uh, lengthening the muscles along our spine, elongating the spine and our back. So think about that. And then exhale and inhale. And back up on your toes, drop your heels to the right. Lean into your right side. Feel the whole left side of your ribs opening and stretching. Inhale back to center, up on your toes. Exhale, drop your heels to the left. Press both palms equally into the mat. Your whole right side of your body stretching. Back up on your toes and back to center. And then exhale. Tippy toe your feet to the top of your mat and bring your feet hip distance width apart for ragdoll. So big bend in your knees and allow your stomach to rest completely on your thighs. You have the option for opposite hand to grab opposite elbow and dangle here. This is perfectly wonderful. If you want a little bit more advancement, you can interlace your hands behind your back and take the funky grip. So usually if you have your left pointer finger forward, switch it, put your right forward. Feels really weird, huh? I know. <laughs> so palms close together and then you can straighten your elbows out. You can allow your hands to drop further back. 
Stay there as long or as little as you like. If your hands are grabbing either elbow, maybe start to sway right and left. And just feel everything releasing and melting away. Feel your low back, your upper back, your head, your neck, everything just completely releasing. Release any grip, any tightness, anything you're holding on to. And then imagine that your head has a lid on it. So imagine there's a lid and you just unscrew the lid, the lid's off, and anything that's in your head, on your mind, visualize it falling out onto your mat. So release your hands down to the mat, almost like, uh, like if you're an elephant, like an elephant trunk swaying back and forth. And as you do, Anything that's been on your mind, anything you're, you've been thinking of, just let it go. Visualize it falling out, catching the air, and just floating away. So it no longer serves you, you no longer need it. You've seen it float away. And then toe heel your feet together. So bring your big toes to touch, your heels a sliver apart. And so, so, so slowly roll up to standing. So feel each and every vertebrae as you come up and bring your hands to heart center and close your eyes. So close your eyes and stay here. And let's set an intention for our flow together today. So our intention being relinquishing fear. So imagine if you could just let go of any fear, whether it's on your mat or off your mat, what more could you do or what more could you invite into your life? So simply what holds us back, what holds us back from you know, a challenging pose like Crow today is the fear. And really what's the worst that can happen? Maybe you fall forward a couple inches. So if you're at home, the beauty of a home practice, build a fort, put pillows all around you, build a fort, now you have nothing to fear. But, you know, when fearful thoughts come to mind, just tell yourself you can and see what more you can bring into your life. So inhale, breathe in, seal your lips, breathe all the way in. And then open mouth, exhale, and let anything go that doesn't serve you. <sighs> inhale, your arms up to the sky. Palms face each other, relax your shoulders away from your ears, pinkies towards the ocean or the wall, breathing in and out. And then exhale, hands through heart center, micro bend in your knees, fold forward, hinge at your hips, reach your fingers down to the earth. And if your hands come and they fall here to your thighs or your shins, that's wonderful. Be okay with where you're at. It's actually the more advanced yogis that know to listen to their body and know how far you need to go. Some days you might want to go further, other days you might just want to stay a little bit shorter and that's perfectly okay. Inhale, halfway lift. So if your palms are at the earth, press your palms into the mat, squeeze your shoulder blades together. If your hands have fallen at your shins or your thighs, avoid the knees, so always avoid joints. And then make an L with your body. So flat back, there's a string tied to the crown of your head, pulling your head forward. And then exhale, fold forward. And now go ahead and uh, sit down on your mat and come to lie on your back. So we're gonna move into our core strengthening series and then we're gonna get right into some versions of crow. So lie back on your back, bend your knees, and then your knees come about shoulder distance width apart. Flex your toes, so your big toes are touching, your, your feet are pointed and your toes flexed. Hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, elbows out wide and start to crunch up. So stay with your breath. If you start to lose your breath, then just take a little break and come back to it when you feel ready. And keep your elbows open wide so you can't even see them in your peripheral vision. No straining, no stress in your neck. And just breathe. You can do anything for 30 seconds and think you made it to your mat today and that's the hardest part. So just tell yourself you can and stay with it. Our mind wants to give up 10 times before our body 
really physically does. So know that, recognize it, and see you're already done. Except we're gonna hold. So hold here and reach your arms up to the sky or the ceiling and draw your knees close to your shoulders, as close to your shoulders as you can. Flex your hands like you're, you're pressing the sky away. Breathing, feel yourself becoming nice and tight. Your abs are engaged. You're rounding your back like in cat cow. And guess what? You're in crow. This is crow. So memorize this feeling. Memorize the roundness, the tightness, your abs. And then cross your feet and rock and roll yourself over to sitting on your toes. So um, at home or if you're so lucky to be at the beach too, wherever you might be, um, go ahead and sit down on your mat and I'm gonna demonstrate for you first. So I'm gonna walk you through how we get into crow first and then we'll do it together. So the, um, the thing I love about crow is that uh, it's one of the first inversions that is typically taught in a yoga class. Um, and while it's one of the first, it also can be taken to so many different levels. So it, again, if you've never practiced uh, or if you do every day, there's an option for you. And know that um, yoga gives you so much. It, it doesn't necessarily take strength, it builds strength. And it's so much about the mind. Uh, so tell yourself that you can, truly believe you can. Draw back to our intention of relinquishing fear. So if you're fearful of what could happen just falling forward, I'll show you some tricks so you can, you can know how to get out of it before you even get into it. So with Crow, place your hands down. So the same distance as we did in tabletop and down dog. That's why it's important to do um, you know, a good 10, 15 minute warm up to build that muscle memory of knowing that your wrists are directly under your shoulders, fingers spread wide, press down into all 10 knuckles, squeeze your thumbs together, squeeze your biceps together. Now come up on your tippy toes, lift your hips, and you're just gonna bring your knees to the back of your triceps. Now if you've never done curl before, um, you might say, oh, that is not an optimal feeling. So no pain is good pain ever. Um, but if this is just uncomfortable, you have the option to bring your knees outside of your triceps. So whichever option feels better for you. And then just like Chaturanga, where we're in high plank, shift your weight forward, bend your elbows back for low plank, same thing. So build your foundation. So once you find steadiness here, gaze ahead. So that's a trick. Rather than looking down, gaze a foot or two ahead of your mat. As you shift your weight forward, this is crow. If you wanna lift one foot to fly your crow, maybe lift one, make yourself nice and tight. Your abs are engaged, your um, back is rounded, and this is crow. Maybe you wanna shake your tail feathers. <laughs> or advanced, you can jump back into a high plank and finish out your chaturanga here. So let's go ahead and try crow together. So up on your toes, all together, hands out in front of you, hands directly under your shoulders. And follow the cues and then don't overthink it. You know, just go, just, just go and enjoy it. It's about the journey, not the destination, I promise you that. So once you get there, it's like, all right, what's next? So enjoy it. Hands under your shoulders, fingers spread wide, knees, wiggle them up as high as you can on your triceps. Strong and steady foundation. Gaze ahead, shift your weight forward, bend your elbows back. Nice and tight, back is round, abs are engaged. Maybe you lift one foot, maybe you lift the other. You can stay here as long or little as you like. You can, you can shake your little tail feathers, fly your crow, jump back into chaturanga, or go to tripod. <laughs> Whatever option is your favorite. And the, um, and the beauty of crow is that it does, it builds strength, it builds endurance and focus. You really need to use your drishti, your gaze, to find that one point to focus on, to not allow any distractions in life to uh, take away that focus. And uh, naturally, it really works your core. So um, that abdominal lock. So think about almost like you have a, a corset on uh, where you're nice and tight or if you're a guy, likely not a corset. So think about them coming around to mm, punch you in the stomach. That feeling in your gut, mm, that's what you want to keep the whole time. So um, another option 
because I think it is probably the cutest yoga pose in the world is baby crow or mini crow, whatever we want to call it. So exact same feeling, but it's also a great option if you have any wrist issues. So I come from uh, major wrist issues. I could barely have any range of motion for about a year. Um, so I made up a lot of variations. I learned a lot of variations so I could still practice all the time. So if you would rather not put any pressure on your wrist or if you just want to do the cutest pose ever, go ahead and put your hands down uh, like you're going to go into a forearm stand up on your toes and wiggle yourself down nice and low. And you're gonna squeeze your thumbs together, squeeze your biceps together, wiggle your knees to the back of your triceps, gaze ahead, shift your weight forward, maybe you lift one and maybe you lift the other. And there's a little baby crow. So thank you for uh, flying and flowing with us today and crow and I encourage you to um, you know, continue to practice. And as you do, draw back to our intention of relinquishing fear. And not only as you work on these poses, but as you um, just move throughout your day, you know, uh, let go of fear. If you're, you're not worried about the outcome or, or what if, um, what more can you do? So um, thanks and we'll see you for our next flow soon.